In order to draw a Lewis dot diagram, you need to know the element's valence number. The valence number is actually the last number in the electron configuration. So for carbon here and the key on the periodic table, it's the four that would tell you the valence number of electrons. We're going to do the electron configuration of neon, whose valence number is 8. So first we draw the symbol. The symbol is referred to as the kernel. It represents all of the nucleus, so the protons and neutrons, plus all of the non-valence electrons. So for neon, that would be the two electrons in the first principal energy level. The eight valence electrons we're going to place around the outside of the symbol, around the outside of what we just said we call the kernel, and they go in a very specific order. The first two are going to be placed on top, right next to each other as dots, and those are the two electrons that would be going into the 2s sublevel. S, if you recall, has one orbital or one orientation, so that's why we're only using one side of the dot diagram. Now, the next six electrons are going into the 2p sublevel. 2p has three orbitals, so we are going to use the last three sides that we haven't used yet, and we're going to follow Hun's bus seat rule. So this would be the next electron, and then the next one, and the next one. So now we've placed five, six, seven, and number eight. So that would be the dot structure for neon. Let's now do one for a different element, maybe one that's not totally full. We're going to do it for calcium. Calcium's valence number is two. So we're going to put its symbol as Ca, and then the two electrons will go on the same side, and we're done. Let's do another one, but this time let's do a nonmetal. Let's, let's do nitrogen, whose valence number is 5. So I'll get that out of the way. So nitrogen, the first two electrons go on top. Those are the ones in S. And then number three, four, and five. It's really easy to tell using a dot diagram how many electrons are unpaired. So nitrogen, pardon me, has three unpaired electrons. That's going to become important when we talk about creating uh, bonds a little later on this year. The number of unpaired electrons becomes really important. The other thing you have to be able to do is draw dot diagrams for an ion. So we're going to now draw the ion for calcium. I would have to tell you the charge at this point in the year. So we're going to say that calcium has a charge of plus 2. Since electrons are negative, if an ion has a positive charge, it means it's lost that many electrons. Well, calcium only has two valence electrons, so if it has a plus two charge, when we draw its dot structure, you will have no dots on it. And then to indicate that you know it has a charge, you would put brackets saying inside these brackets are all the electrons I mean to have drawn, and then you put the charge on the outside. I'd like to do a negative one now, so I'm going to grab another slide. And this time we're going to do nitrogen with a minus 3 charge. We just had drawn nitrogen with its 5 valence electrons. So if it has a negative charge of 3, electrons being negative, that means it must have gained 3 electrons. So nitrogen would go from having 5, which it would be an atom having, to gaining three more for a total of eight. 
and then we put brackets around it containing all of those electrons inside and then the charge on the outside. And that's how you draw dot diagrams of atoms and ions.